Yeah, first, uh, my teammates really did a good job. I want to remember that we are a co pro continental team, and and uh, I think because of the angel, all my teammates they gave uh, their 110 percent, and uh, we talked about that ye uh, yesterday evening in the meeting, and I'm really proud of them. Then the final was uh, really hard because of the rain, because of the cold, because of the ice rain. And uh, at one point I thought, okay, maybe I'm out because I'm su I was suffered a lot uh, the coldness. And uh, but I I saw the faces of of the guys in the bunch. I think uh, it was really bad, like mine, <laughs> because of the cold and. Uh, uh, and for one moment, I thought in 2012 the uh, Liege Baston Liege was the same, and uh, I was good because I I tried to stay focused on myself only. And uh, okay, I tried to eat more because of the coldness. And uh, with the new percours, the the final is uh, the final lap uh, is not uh, anymore in the Koitenberg or that climbs. It's just a fight of, for a position, so I, I fight for position at that point, and then in the final circuit, I try to stay in the front, and uh, my my toes were uh, okay. Orica is working really hard for Matthews, but Matthews prefers to uh, to arrive in a bunch sprint. So if I arrive in a bunch sprint with Matthews, I'm beaten, and. Uh, I want, I wanted to try, but uh, I know that I have not the same power of Gilbert. But uh, for that reason, also I remember 2012 when I won. I did the cover with the 39 and not with 53. And today I, I decided to do the same, to do the hardest part of cover with 39. And uh, when I attack, I attack with 39. Uh, I was almost crashed on the corner first, then with 39 I came back in the front, no body attacks, so I, take, I thought, okay, it's my time. I tried it, and then uh, on the previous finish I put 53, and then I go full gas, and luckily uh, jump, uh, the think of guys jump me, and uh, he did a super job. I think that without him I could not arrive because uh, there were a super strong headwind today in the finish. And that's what happened. I stay in the wheels. I think that for uh, for Wagner it was a good result to arrive second because he push, pull, 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 pull. And that I was lucky also for that because for, for sure if uh, was Kreuziger and not Wagner, maybe we <laughs> fight a little bit <laughs> for the sprint, but Wagren, uh, for Wagren was uh, was good to arrive second, I think, and me, I, I was only focused on sprint and wait, I wait, I wait, because of the handwind, and then, and then it was super. Congratulations, Mr. Gasparotto. Can you tell us how you felt the last three weeks from the day of Kent Wevelham to now? With what happened? Yeah, in uh, Gun, the day of Gun Weber game, me I was in Catalonia for the last stage. I did a, a good Catalonia. I was super happy in the airport, waiting to to come back to to my wife. And uh, at that point, uh, we we uh, the team called us that uh, our teammate was not good because of the crash. And I was with uh, with his best man and uh, with Gat and Bill in the airport, and and it was a special moment because uh, Gat and called the wife and some we I think we we realized that he was close to dead just before to come back uh, to Italy. I was still in airport in Barcelona, and from that point I felt really sick sick inside myself. Uh, I couldn't sleep uh, the night between Sunday and Monday after Gun Wevelgem, like I think all my teammates. And uh, the day, uh, the Monday after the death of Antoine, I had also control, anti-doping control at home. 
and that was also hard because okay it's our job okay we we had to do that we had to do the controls but it was not the right moment to do controls eh? and the day after i had already planned to go to tenerife for an altitude training camp and uh, i was really it was hard to let my wife alone at home and uh, me to be <coughs> to be alone on Teide uh, in a such hard moment for everybody, for all the team. I, I wrote mails with the, with the staff, with the management to decide all together what is the best thing to do because uh, I was to be present at the funerals of Antoine but from Tenerife to Belgium and then back in Tenerife it's a long way and in, uh, in accordance with the, with the management, we decided that I... And I asked also to Jose, I asked to my teammates what they think about what, what is the best thing to do if to come to Belgium or to stay in, uh, in Tenerife. And everybody told me, Gaspar, stay in Tenerife and try to be focused for, the, for this week. And uh, I did it and I think that it was the right choice because I was alone, and sometimes when you are alone, it's better. You, you can be more focused on yourself, more uh, mentalized on the race, and maybe when you don't see, uh, also maybe it's better. No, I, I didn't see my teammates cry, teammates cry. I didn't see Lair cry. I didn't see the wife of Antoine crying. So. That maybe make me stronger because I didn't see them, and uh, and then I know uh, I know that I, I feel inside myself a big responsibility in these days, um, really a big responsibility. And yesterday, the Antoine's wife came to our hotel also to say, "Hello, guys, go for it," and uh, it, it it was not easy. It's not easy. I'm 34 years old. I have, a, I have a wife, and every every day we're thinking about that because now it's so fresh that it's so fresh the death of Antoine. But it's not easy with the time when uh, when the wife of Antoine will be alone at home, and all the flesh, all the press, everything, everybody is gone, and she stays alone now. Eh? Uh, it's not easy to ride a bike and I really sometimes also today when I was really uh, I suffered like everybody because of the cold I was really uh, like that but if you think about it, Antoine you have to go uh, you have to go you have to go a block no way uh, and we go we saw in the past of cycling that uh there were some moments with the death of uh, Casatelli that uh, Lance Armstrong found some extra power. It gives some riders, teammates, uh, some extra strength. Do you believe in that? Sure. I've, I felt that already in training in Tenerife. Look, when, uh, when I did seven hours alone training in Tenerife with 4,500 uh, altitude meters, up and down, up and down in the island, you have time to think about everything, eh? You have time to think about everything. And, uh, okay, I, I, normally I, I use iPhone uh, with the music and blah, blah, blah. But when I thought about Antoine and what happened, I, <coughs> I it's true, it, it's, it's not because it's, it's good to, to tell to you that but it's true. I told also to my wife that uh, when I thought uh, about Antoine, I go 30 watts faster than, uh, than normal, or three or four or five kilometers per hour more. And, uh, and that's, that's true. Uh, look, uh, an example is uh, my teammate today, Mark McNally. Yesterday was in France for a race. And uh, our teammate Bill was sick, so McNally had to, to come back to Belgium, 900k, 
far from here. And uh, his role for today was to stay with me all the day, to protect me in the first part of the race. But he stayed with me until 60, 60k to go. Eh? That means extra, extra power. Kenny the eyes bring me a bottle with 80k to go <coughs> from the from behind to to the front of the of the bunch. This is another example of uh, extra power. Kenny came to me, he, he gave me the bottles, and he told me, Gaspar, I'm fucked. <laughs> and and he goes. And also that thing gave me an extra power. When you have uh, such a teammates that they gave 110% for you, if you have to do it something. You have to do something for them. And that's, that's it. I'm really happy. Sometimes I was really afraid eh, to come back in the bus this, after the race and told them, sorry guys, today it was not my day. <laughs> But now I'm, I'm looking for that moment because I want to come back to the bus and really hug everybody. Mr. Casparotto, it must have been uh, mixed emotions when you crossed the finish line and you showed it also in, in the gestures to the sky. Could you describe uh, your feelings? Yeah, I, I try to stay to stay mentalized for the victory until the last 180 meters because of the headwind. Then when I'm, I was realizing that I'm, I'm gonna winning <coughs> the Amstel Gold Race for the second time, it was an amazing feeling, I'm really amazing. I thought about Temotier, I thought about my wife and that's the, the most important that I had uh, crossing the finish line. Then I saw the, the team manager, uh, Jean-Francois Bourlard, came to me, coming to me and hugged me really strong. And look, uh, in cycling, we have lost a lot of riders. And every time is a different story. But now that uh, Antoine was my teammate, uh, okay, was new in the team, he was new in the team, but maybe I, I understand better what they felt track, what they felt Motorola, what they felt Movistar with Tondo. It's something really, really, really hard. Enrico, last year you finished top 10 here and you said I'm, I'm happy to, to prove that, that I'm still a, a rider. Now you, you win Amstel, what do you see for, for the future for, for you? But I want, this moment I want to say you, if you check from 2010 until now, how many times I was outside top 10, it was only 2011. And uh, for that reason, I think that when you are in the top 10, you, you are really strong because it's not so easy to, stay, to arrive top 10 every year. Uh, that means that uh, you have to train really well. That means that you have uh, to not be, not be sick before the race. That means that uh, you have not to crash before this race to arrive at top 10 every year. Okay, maybe in Astana and in the World Tour, <coughs> because of the, the points problem, so a lot of World Tour teams has contrast with points, World Tour points and blah, blah, blah. Maybe I've lost my, my, my motivation for winning and I prefer to wait, 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 and wait, 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 because maybe it's better to arrive top 10, then try to win, and then not in the top 10. And when I changed the team last year, I, okay, I, I needed some time, because after 12 years in, a world to, in World Tour teams, it's a completely different world. 
and uh, I did 12 years in the World, in World Tour teams and now two years in the Pro Continental team. So it was, uh, was good last year. I understand a lot of things, new things, and maybe this year that I don't have the problem of points, I, I start the race just to try to win it and not to stay in, in the wheels and, and to arrive top 10. So for that reason, the big change is this one maybe, my head, my head, it's, cool. it's different. When you, you are maybe with Astana, with, I rode Amster with Nibali, with Fulsang, that guys, they had to try to win alone, and me, I had to stay ready for the sprint. Now I'm in, a, in one group Gobert, and I can, I can do what I want, and maybe I'm, I have more confidence in myself now, and then uh, also after Wednesday, because I, I was really good, everybody told me, Gaspa, you were really so good, so strong. Ah, I, me, I, I don't, I lost the race, uh, okay, I was strong, but uh, I didn't win. And today I try, and all that words from my colleagues, from also from other teams, help me to to to, to be more confident in myself. And <coughs> and today I thought uh, maybe it's better to try to to try on the cowbell, uh, than to arrive in the sprint with uh, Matthews and be maybe five if I have luck. <laughs> Otherwise maybe eight or nine again. That's the big difference.